I'm getting ready to head inside to the R2 reveal. I am so excited for this event. It is really a make or break Model Y moment for Rivian. Okay, Kimberly, you're all set. Thanks for being here. Going into the R2 event, I think we all assumed that we knew everything. There had been some leaks, but those leaks are, were actually different than the specs that came out today. Turns out you're looking at a $45,000 base price R2 that gives you almost everything its larger sibling, the R1S, offers, but at a 40% cheaper starting price. The design looks very much like the R1S. It's kind of like a scaled down version of the R1S. It sticks with the signature that Rivian likes to have. With the R2 overlaid on top of the R1S, you can see the R2 is 15 inches shorter in length and 10 inches lower in height with a six inch smaller wheelbase. I am so excited about a good size front trunk. You could fit a lot of stuff in here. This is definitely bigger than the Tesla's front trunk right here. You can fit a stroller, you can fit groceries, charging cables, everything you, that you need right here. So does this open up more? Look at that, there's a little more storage underneath. Nobody talks about that. Now, does it have a drain? Is that the drain? Yeah. Oh, I don't, I don't see a drain. Oh yeah, I love this. This is key for people who are short like me. A strap to close it and bring it down. Strut so that when you release the latch, it pops up. Um, but keeping again the cost down, okay. get something that's still extremely useful. Some of the immediate differences were that all five seats can fold flat. As you saw, your front trunk is now manual, but that doesn't take away from how premium the interior touches look and feel. You now get two glove boxes plus Rivian's next-gen steering wheel, which had these neat dynamic integrated control dials that adjust based on what you're using. As far as charging cables go, do did you guys notice that the charger is in the back of the vehicle on the passenger side, just like Tesla. They're using the NACS. We can walk around and see that too. We have the charger in the back. There were some rumors that they're, they were going to do like this combination CCS, NACS. I'm glad that that is not true, that they are going NACS because almost years. So we see these on the road. It was surprising that they're going to start building the R2 in normal Illinois just to get it out a little bit faster. Um, and then they'll move it, the production, to Atlanta factory. But I think that getting this on the road is going to be key for them, and getting it out quickly is going to be key. I will say it's a pretty spacious second row as well. You can fit three car seats. I think if they're slim car seats, you could probably fit three across, which again, as a parent, that is something that I'm looking for. These all completely fold flat, and even the front seats fold flat. So that is something very unique I've never seen before. This is the R2, the R2 and the R3 are on a similar platform from a lot of similarities between all the vehicles. I feel like as you move between the R2 and the R3, um, you kind of get more of that hatchback and then you get the R3X and it's even more of a slope and making it more sporty. Um, but again, this is a great option for a lot of people who need extra space back here. If you're a dog owner, this would be like the perfect car because there's so much room back here. Free kids. It can work, but I would probably go for the R1S over the R2. Um, but again, at this price point being, you know, under $40,000, feels very premium inside. Take a look at the headrest back here. You have the little hooks. It looks like we have two USB-Cs in the back as well. Huge pockets for drinks, whatnot. Let's look at these doors over here. So you have lots of storage area. I love that they still include this. I feel like a lot of cars are getting rid of this little area and that's something that I really, really like to have with kids. They can store, you know, their books, coloring books, their, you know, iPads, whatnot, right in that back area. That's something that I miss having, I would say, in our Tesla. So it's nice to be able to have that in this car. So look inside of here right now. I just noticed we have two USB-Cs and a 110 volt. I love being able to have a 110 volt. They finally get rid of that stupid 12 volt nobody uses that anymore the car itself is five seats i was kind of hoping for that seven seat being that i have kids and it would make it a bigger family vehicle but because it's five seats it does give you more cargo capacity and it has this really cool area back here that's kind of like a table and then again this this opens up and you actually have storage it slides back and forth you can use this like a table a changing table which you know as a mom is something that i'm always looking for this would be a great place to change a diaper right back here or if you go camping or you're tailgating, you can put a drink on it, and then underneath it, you still have all that storage. When this is in, 
access to storage. Oh, sure. That's a lot of storage. Yeah. And so coming in and saying all the questions you guys had, of what is carryover? What is unique? What parts are there standard? A lot of it is in the DNA of what we want. We want to take the most efficient package of everything we have in the vehicle. And so that's where if something that's nice and simple, you can still use it. I can sit out here, have lunch. Now look at this, we have three tethers going across. I also forgot to mention that this is load bearing. So, you know, you could put some actual weight on this thing if you're, it has so many uses, so many, and that's the one thing about Rivian, I will say that it beats so many other vehicles, is that they think about all these little accessories and how you're actually gonna use this vehicle. Obviously, it's an adventure vehicle, so they're thinking about that. Oh, that's like a shelf you can store drinks on right there. When that's down. I don't know if you guys just saw that, but when he closed it down, if, imagine it being closed, you can open up that window and then pop out a little shelf. So you have like this little area that you can pop your drink and it's like a little bar actually in the back of your car if you think of it. There's also power on the roof. Inside here, I'm not gonna touch it. Inside here, I can see two pins. Is there more than two pins? There's at least two pins. So you could essentially charge an electric bike while you're towing it, which I think is just kind of mind blowing. There's rumors maybe Rivian would even come out with an electric bike. So you guys know that I am a fan of doing something a little bit out of the box. And one of the things I'm seeing today with the R2 and the R3 are like the pops of color. Look at this. We have the Rivian badging right here on the wheel well, on the, the wheels. Um, right here and then the R3 takes it to a whole nother level. So the R3 was a major surprise. It was so exciting when this thing rolled out on stage. I really love it. It is a little bit smaller than the R2. I don't know if you guys are able to see this just in pictures, but it's definitely like that smaller size. They talked about not really having a place for what to call this. Like do you call it an SUV, a crossover SUV, and they're okay with that. They want it just to be the R3, the R2. Like it doesn't have to have a specific Specific place. What's cool about it is it has more of that angular design in the back. It's smaller, maybe easier to drive if you live in a big city with smaller roads. Um, you don't have quite as much cargo capacity back here, but again, it keeps the same design language as the R2. And then the R3X is the one that I am mostly excited about. I love this. I love the design. I love the colors, the orange. And they said they call this like a Laguna Blue. These colors are so nice. It has a little bit of that sparkle in it that I absolutely love. But again, the color pops. The color pops are everywhere in this vehicle. It is so much fun. It really brings that more of that hatchback, the angular design, the inside of it. Again, we have the orange right here. There's orange inside, you can kind of see on the seats. Um, so much fun. And then the steering wheel on this thing is its own shape, right? It has that racing style stripe on it. I really like that. This thing feels very sporty to me. And I feel like when I see all three of these vehicles together, the one that excites me for some reason is really this one. I love how sporty yet adventurous. And again, it's like this whole different place in the market that I've never really seen before. And it is like a sexier version, if I can say that, of the R2 or maybe the R3, it's the R3X. Again, maybe that X is for sexy, I'm not really sure, but it's fun, it's really cool, it's really different. I love it, I think this vehicle is, is going to be a game changer, it's gonna be very popular. Extremely pleased, I am so extremely impressed that Rivian managed to keep the R3 and the R3X a secret, like no one on the internet knew, and that is so hard to do. So nice work Rivian on that. I can't wait to see what the specs are of the R3X. I'm so excited for that car. Well, everyone's curious, when can we order the R3? So R3 will be coming after R2, no specific timing just yet, but it'll be coming after the R2 launch. Completely approachable. It's so different than a Tesla event. Tesla event is like Elon's up on that stage, he's rushed in, rushed out. You don't really get to talk to him. We're here, it's like, hey, he's right here. Like, how cool is that? What do you think of R3X? Yeah, very impressive. I thought you were like, so impressive. Check out the interior. So okay. I saw it, dude. I'm freaking so blown good. away. It's so cool. And you kept it secret so well. No one knew. We no got an R2 leak that happened. I was like, thank God it was an R3. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Oh, man, so good. In shock, where do I just pull my wallet out and get this R3X? The like, R3X just kept getting like, better and better. Yeah, nobody thought that coming. I had no idea. For me and my taste, right, the Model Y seems more sedan car. If you're looking for an SUV, the, the style and the stance of this kind of feels more traditional SUV. 
but in a smaller package than the R1. So if you were looking for someone that's really, hey, I want that rugged, plush look of a vehicle, I think that's the separating factor with the R2 versus the Model Y. Event is pretty much wrapping up right now. We're about to leave, but what a cool surprise this was. And I just am blown away by how approachable everyone that works at Raven is. I was able to speak to RJ, the chief designer, so many different people that uh, at a Tesla event, I've never been able to have that ex same experience at all. But I'm, I'm pretty safe to say, I think Rivian is here to say, this really was way more than I was ever expecting. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it.